Hello everyone, my name is Maíra Bezerra and I am an associate scientist with the Moore Center for Science at Conservation International. I'm happy to be with you all and I'm here to continue our journey understanding freshwater ecosystem services after the great lessons from Kane Irvine. The learning objective of this lecture is on how to measure ecosystem services provided by water ecosystems. When we consider the many different types of freshwater ecosystem services, we have seen from the previous lecture that it's possible to estimate total economic value to a wetland or other freshwater habitat. This is done by adding up a range of ecosystem services, such as what we saw in the example for the conversion of the mangrove forest to shrimp farming. There are other ways, however, to estimate the value of these services and provide qualitative or quantitative indicators for individual services. From the slide here, we can see on the left that we can consider the habitat as an asset and the value of that asset comprises the final service. Typically, they are cultural or provisioning services and the intermediate service are, is typically supporting or regulating services. The right-hand panel here shows a range of services that indicators of value or importance can be assigned. This inevitably involves commensurate range of techniques or comparisons to assign a metric of value. For provisioning service or services, an economic estimation often works well and is relatively easy to estimate from simple economic valuation. Here is an example from a wetland in Uganda where the market value of different crops are used to estimate total value of the wetland. However, it does not estimate the value of the regulating services or the loss of those services through wetland conversion. Another good example is the more comprehensive methods that have been developed for South African vegetated wetlands. This example in this slide provides an overview of the types of services that are included in the wet eco-services developed by Kutze and co-workers. This accounts for different services related to habitat types and has been shown to be very useful for identifying management needs for wetland production and restoration. When such an elaboration as done in the wet ecosystem assessment methods are not possible, even simple no quantitative metrics using qualitative analysis can be performed using expert judgment or participatory processes. For example, by asking local communities to assign a high, medium, or low value to the importance of some specific ecosystem services. In-depth, semi-structured interviews to focus groups can be used for this objective. Examples of qualitative Indicators can be, for instance, changes in the beauty of a landscape, impacts on security and well-being, as well as impacts on cultural and spiritual values. Information on the state of ecosystems is fundamental to assess their capacity to deliver ecosystem services. It is also important to explore possible ecological thresholds where ecosystem functions can be irreversibly lost. Quantitative indicators use physical numerical units of measurements. And here are some examples of these kinds of units. For provisioning services, 
freshwater abstraction in a watershed measured by cubic meters per year is an example. Another one is crop, crop production in tons per year. For regulating services, examples include carbon sequestered in peatlands with metric unit as tone per hectare per year. Another example is removal of nutrients by wetlands measured with uh, tones per year or percentage. And for cultural services, examples of units of measurements include changes in the number of residents as well as number of visitors to a site per year. The overall objective of using ecosystem services in policy to achieve, for example, the sustainable development goals is to enable better decision making. But to do that, we need to have the appropriate and validated and accepted techniques. The next lecture on this subtopic related to quantification will introduce you to the Freshwater Health Index as a means to assess ecosystem services that can be used to support policy and management decisions. And with that, it comes the end of this lecture. I hope you had a happy learning and see you or talk to you in our next lecture. Bye.